everybody. It's uh, it's me back, K- uh, just Casey this time. Um, DJ is actually out of town, uh, I guess, for one of his friend's birthdays or something. So uh, he wasn't able to join me on this. But I wanted to come on and do a quick, uh, well, I don't know how quick it's going to be, but a review of uh, Russell Circus. Wrestle Circus's uh, Lucha Carnival show that they had tonight. Well, now technically last night uh, because it's now one o three a.m. But um, <clears throat> they did have a show um, that they actually had free um, that I happened to uh, see on their Instagram page. I was just looking through Instagram and I saw that they were having a free show. Um, today, so I, I checked it out. Um, it was on IRW Network, I think it was dot com. <clears throat> um, so that's kind of cool. I definitely I like when um, <clears throat> independent promotions do you know free shows <clears throat> promoting themselves. Um, then you can kind of get an idea of what their shows like. Uh, that way, you know you can. If you decide to, you can then in the future buy their iPay-per-views. Um, so that's kind of cool that they did that. Um, but it was definitely a really good show. Um, I, we, I, I know we talked a little bit back uh, around WrestleMania. I did talk to, um, I don't know if it was the owner, um, but one of the guys in charge of Russell Circus. And we were supposed to originally back then get a code to review one of their uh, pay-per-views uh, that they were doing midnight after mania. Um, never got the email, so I don't know what happened there, but I figured we'd do this um, because, you know, it was a good show. This one, I don't know about midnight after mania. I wasn't able to watch it. Um, <clears throat> Cause like I said, they never sent me the link uh, to anything. Um, so I I don't know what's going on with that, uh, or what went on with that, but let's get into this show. Um, so I I did, I, I scheduled this all day. Um, you know, I, I had seen that was, it was going to be on. So I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to be home for this. It was 6 PM, um, central standard time. Uh, so Eastern would have been seven o'clock. Um, so I was, I was planning on it and then I got doing something and I looked at the clock and it was seven thirteen. I was like, oh crap. So I did get into it a little bit late. Um, I did, I don't think I missed too much. Um, we had Zenshi versus Jordan Lennox. Um, don't really know too much about either of these guys. Um, I, again, I came I came came into it halfway through <clears throat> this match, and unfortunately, it was a live stream, and it didn't allow you to back it up at all. So uh, I missed half of this match. Um, but I guess it was Zenshi's debut with uh, Wrestle Circus. Um, the hell was that? Sorry, my. Uh, I got the uh, dishwasher going, and it just made a weird noise. But uh, from what I saw, this you know it was a pretty good opening match. Um, I don't know if this was like their official opening match because it didn't it didn't feel like it was. It felt like I don't want to say a dark match for a uh, you know indie show, but that's what it felt like a little bit. Um, and then we get, I guess, I'll consider this next match the official show because that's how it made they made it seem like. It was that way. But um, we had a best friends match. Um, I I don't know what a best friends match is, but this is what they had. Uh, We had the world's sweetest man, Jervis Gottenbelly. I love him. He's one of my favorites, Um, especially in Lucha Underground. Or uh, not Lucha Underground. um, Shakara. I was thinking of uh, Pentagon, uh, who came on later on. But uh, he was one of my favorites um, in Shikara um, when I used to be able to watch Shikara more. But um, it was Jervis Cottonbelly versus Super Thunder Frog. Um, definitely a, a fun match to watch. 
Um, Jervis and Super Thunder Frog attempted to hug each other before the match, uh, but the ref denied it, uh, <laughs> which uh, began a let them hug chance, which is always, always a great chance. Um, I did love the, you know, the comedy aspect of this match, and which, you know, is what it was meant to be, just kind of a, a fun match. Um, very interesting techniques, you know, by both uh, Jervis and Super Thunder Frog. Um, I love Jun I loved Jervis going to the top rope. Uh, then he kind of he rethought it and moved down to the second rope, and you know that was still a little bit too high for him. So he went down to the bottom rope, and I forgot what he went for, uh, but it didn't really work out for him. <clears throat> um, and then uh, I I think I, I, yeah Jervis did win this match. Um, <clears throat> after the match, a bunch of guys, I don't know who they were, came in and, uh, attacked, uh, Jervis, but Super Thunder Frog came in for the save, for the rescue. Um, definitely a fun opening, uh, match, you know, to, to kind of get you into the show. Um, the next match was Dirty Andy Dalton versus Garza Jr., um, I knew, you know, I knew this was going to be a good match. Um, I haven't seen a ton of Andy Dalton, but from what I've seen, I was very, you know, interested in this match. And both DJ and I loved Garza Jr. from um, his work in Impact so far recently um, that we've seen. So that was, I was definitely excited to see him on this show. Um, oh, we got a really good. Uh, Suicide dive by Dirty De Dirty Andy Dalton, um, which I definitely liked. You know, he's he's not a not a huge guy, but he's a, a you know heftier fella, uh, I would say. Um, so seeing him do a dive was kind of cool. Um, but this this match definitely gave me a kind of new appreciation for Garza Jr. Just because you know I haven't seen much of him in singles competition. Um, especially in impact, he, you know, he's been, he's been doing more, um, tag team stuff, uh, in, in impact with Laredo kid. Uh, so kind of seeing him in singles competition kind of showed me a little bit more of what he kind of brings to the table. Um, and then, uh, we got Andy Dalton with a devastating brain buster on Garza Jr. for a near fall. But, uh. Uh, Andy Dalton did get the win with a pile driver. Um, again, a really good match. Definitely, you know, um, I, I got like I said, I got to see a little bit more of Garza Jr. You know, by himself um, without a tag team partner, and then I got to see more of Andy Dalton. So um, that was definitely good. Um, we had a next was a triple threat R Lucha Rules tag team match uh, is what they said. Uh, we had Tessa Blanchard uh, and Taya Valkyrie versus Alley Cat and uh, Christy James <clears throat> versus Thunder Rosa and Leva Bates uh, or uh, Leva Parka. Um, she, uh, I, I love Leva Bates uh, dressed up like La Parca, uh, <laughs> uh, which, you know, kind of fit in with the Lucha Carnival um, theme, which was kind of cool. Um, they, from what they said, Lucha Rules basically meant, you know, it's a three falls match. Did not end up being a three falls match. Um, so I, I don't know why, if there was just this some miscommunication or what was going on with that. But um, definitely like this match. Um, it wasn't the best match on the card, but, you know, um, it, it was definitely good for what it was. You know, there was a few um, spots and, and moves in this match that – weren't botched or anything, but they didn't look as smooth as they should have. 
um, or yeah, should have, especially for, you know, all these women are definitely, you know, very talented in the ring, you know, very experienced. Um, I, so I don't know what was going on with that. If it was just, you know, excitement or adrenaline or what, but some of the moves just kind of, like I said, didn't look as, um, as smooth as I would have expected them to. Um, but this was definitely um, a good match. Um, Taya and Tessa ended up winning. Um, and we move on to the Wrestle Circus sideshow, or actually, I should say, a championship match, which had uh, the boys, uh, Dalton Castle's boys from uh, Ring of Honor, if, if you don't know who I'm referring to. Versus Joey Ryan, and Joey Ryan was uh, defending three different championships in this match, and it was a handicap match. So it was the boys versus Joey Ryan, uh, the boys as one entity. Uh, the titles that were on the line in this match were the Wrestle Circus Sideshow Championship, the DDT Pro Iron Man Championship, and the Pro Wrestling Revolver Open Scramble Championship. Um, all three were being, you know, defended by Joey Ryan in this match. And this definitely was one of the matches I, I was definitely looking forward to when I looked at the card. Um, I finally learned the boys' names. Uh, Brandon has the brown highlights in his hair, and the I, the, I guess the younger of the two is brent um so that you know finally i you know i can i can figure out which one is which still can't do that with the usos but whatever we'll we'll, we'll figure that out one day um the boys had their own kind of uh minion or their own boy um which i thought was kind of funny come out um and tried to get him to grab joey's dong because uh, Joey was trying to get them to grab his dong for the U Porn Plex. Uh, the, th their boy, their minion, whatever you want to call him, uh, didn't want to do it. So they <laughs> threw him out of the ring. Um, but this was a great match. I, I liked that it wasn't, you know, booked too one sided and it wasn't like a complete jobber match. You know, we did get to see, to see some, some good stuff from the boys. Um, they had another minion come out and kind of distract Joey and, you know, the boys tried to do a, a little bit of twin magic, uh, which was unsuccessful, um, you know, other than the fact that, you know, they have different shades of hair that are really noticeable. So I don't think, I don't think twin magic should have worked anyway, um, but it didn't. But um, Joey ended up putting... Brent on top of Brandon, who was bent over, uh, and gave Brent the U porn plex, which made, which forced Brent to give Brandon the Canadian Destroyer, which was awesome. One of the coolest spots uh, of the night. Um, the, <laughs> which they were calling the Dong Destroyer, which I definitely. Um, enjoyed it. I'm, I'm definitely going to try to see if I can find a clip of that uh, and post it because uh, that was awesome. Um, Joey Ryan does win and retain all three of his titles, uh, which I wasn't surprised. Um, then we had a little bit of a break where they recapped a previously aired match. Uh, I guess it was on April 30th between Scorpio Sky, Andy Dalton, and Mr. 450. Um, <clears throat> I didn't really write too much anything about this match just because I would rather kind of review the entire show um, rather than just one match from it. So I'll definitely <clears throat> try to see if I can find that ma that show um, possibly free because uh, I don't necessarily want to pay for an old show but you know if i have to i will <clears throat> if it was a good enough show i'll have to see what other people thought of it but uh getting back into the show we had 
Scorpio Sky versus Michael Elgin. Um, another match I was very interested in um, with the power of Big Mike and the kind of speed and agility of Scorpio Sky. I mean, they both have, you know, pretty good speed and agility. Um, but, you know, um, of course, you know, <clears throat> my, my, my dogs had to go out right in the middle of this match. So I missed part of it. Um, and they took forever, but, um, Scorpio Sky did win via distraction, um, from his posse, I guess you, you would call them. Um, hopefully have to see if I can go back and watch that match again. Um, cause from what I saw it, it, it was pretty good of a match. Um, <clears throat> moving on, we had the lady of the ring championship match. Diana Perrazzo versus Rachel Ellering. Th this, I was super excited and pumped for. Uh, you know, Rachel Ellering, Ellering defending against Diana Perrazzo. Uh, th this match was awesome before it even started. Um, we had uh, beautiful tech. Beautiful technical wrestling uh, to kind of begin the match and throughout the entire match, um, which was definitely really cool. Um, nice work on Deanna's arm by uh, Rachel. Um, and then, you know, this... Um, I, I feel like <clears throat> we don't get enough of this in other... Um, Promotions, women's divisions. We don't get a lot of, you know, technical wrestling. We get like the the high flying, the you know, even in some promotions, hard hitting. But I feel like in we don't get enough, just really good technical wrestling from a lot of women's divisions, and that's what I kind of want to see more of because they, you know, Diana and Rachel showed in this match that they can they can put on a beautiful tech, beautifully technical match. Um, you know, it started to speed up a little bit and got into kind of that nice hard hitting, um, style of match. Uh, but then it did end up slowing down again, getting into that really nice, um, technical kind of exhibition, you know, with Deanna still, uh, or with, um, Rachel still working on Deanna's arm. Um, so I was definitely... You know, <clears throat> real interested in this match. Um, uh, Rachel Ellering did win and retain her title, um, but I would I would love to see these two face off again. Um, but uh, <clears throat> moving on, we had a number one content or a match to defend the number one contenders tendership to the tag team championship match um which was kind of weird um i don't know why you need to defend your already won uh number one contendership but they did that um we had extra talented versus rapungi vice um i've seen a little bit of extra extra talented um in matches on youtube before and obviously, you know, I'm sure everyone knows of Rapungi Vice from New Japan um, and other promotions that they wrestle in. Um, so I was, you know, interested in this match. Um, uh, I definitely was ex was excited that uh, Rocky Romero and Aaron Solo started out this match because um, I like I really like both of them. Um, from each of these teams um very kind of slow start to this match it felt like um but it was a really fun match to watch just a really fun tag team match um Rapungi vice did end up winning i i, I um but uh it, it wasn't anything too spectacular <clears throat> but um i did like on commentary during this match, Lance Hoyt uh, was one of the commentators. He was talking about how um, he and Trent Beretta uh, were 
involved in one of the last shows that Dusty Rhodes wrestled in, uh, which was an NXT show, which I kind of thought was cool. Um, that they kind of he kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, also, they said that Bailey was watching um, WWE. Bailey was watching the show. Uh, she actually retweeted or she uh, tweeted a picture of her watching the show, which was kind of cool. Um, I feel like you don't see like you don't see as many WWE superstars, you know, tweeting about indie shows or other shows um, uh, unless, you know, it's WWE telling them to or whatever. But um, I, I thought that was kind of cool that we got kind of got to see, you know, that, hey, Bailey's watching this show too. Um, uh, Rapungi Vice did win. Um, there was a lot of controversy in this. Um, so uh, <clears throat> Lance Hoyt went into the ring after the match and talked to uh, Extra Talented. And they said, basically, you know, the, the powers that be in – Wrestle Circus have been screwing them over, so they're going to leave um, and maybe come back in the future. So that was kind of, I guess, their departure from Wrestle Circus for now to kind of go other places, which uh, was kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> next, we got <clears throat> sorry, a first time ever match, Keith Lee versus John Morrison. Um, <clears throat> now this, this is a match I would love to have been there live to see in person. Um, I was lucky enough to see Keith Lee live at Evolve 81, uh, Mania Weekend, and, uh, you know, it, it was awesome. Uh, but to see these two li live together would be incredible. Um, and this match was incredible. Um, uh, I, I loved the Spanish Fly on Keith Lee by Morrison from the top rope. Um, the, the, the ref uh, during <clears throat> near the end of the match was kind of distracted. He got his, his shirt pulled over his head, um, and Taya came in and low, gave uh, Keith Lee a low blow, helping John Morrison get the win uh, with some dirty tactics. Um, definitely just a good match, though. Um, both of these guys are really agile, especially Keith Lee for his size, does some crazy things. Um, but I was definitely, you know, interested in this match. Um, also surprised that, uh, that John Morrison used John Morrison as, as his ring name. Um, I know in uh, Lucha, he's Johnny Mundo. Um, and other places, he's been uh, going by Johnny Boone, or whatever his name is from that from the series he was from the movie he did uh for um netflix or whatever um but definitely a, a good match um then we get to the main event of the evening this is the one match i was if for nothing else i wanted to see this show um for this match we had a six-man tag team match with no count outs and no disqualifications, they had to point that out. Um, we had on one team, Juventud Guerrera, uh, Penta L Zero M. I'm just going to freaking still call him Pentagon because that is too long of a name. And Ray Phoenix versus Mr. 450, Shane Strickland, and Sam. <clears throat> Sorry, Sammy Guevara. Um, this match was ridiculous right from the start. Within the first few minutes, we had triple drop kicks, triple super kicks, triple suicide dives. Um, being um, being a bit older, especially uh, at least older than DJ um, and Justin when he comes on. Um, I was definitely excited to see Juventud again. Um, I have I haven't seen him since WCW. So, um, or I shouldn't say WCW um, when he was in WWE for a little while there. Um, but I haven't seen him since then. So it was kind of cool to kind of you know see 
where he is in his career, you know, what he can still do. Um, and he was, he was really good in this match. There was a couple, um, there was like a leapfrog that he did in the beginning of the match that kind of didn't get quite all the way over. Um, I think it was on Mr. 450. Um, didn't get quite over all the way. Um, but all in all, it was a really good match. Really exciting. Um, I, I, I found myself just kind of, getting too into the match and uh trying to take myself out of it a little bit so i can you know write the write the review um otherwise i just would have you know watched the entire match and just kind of not paid attention to anything else um but uh there was so many incredible spots in this match um i, I probably could have written an entire review as long as this review just about this match um because these guys did so many incredible moves so many you know awesome spots um and and you know that was to be to be expected with all these guys um i definitely you know it was cool to uh see um sammy and mr 450 because i haven't seen as much of them um as everyone else in this match so that was kind of cool um, Sammy did end up abandoning his team, causing Pentagon, Ray, and Hoovy to get the win. Um, so, so that was interesting. But um, all in all, this this show was really, really good. Um, I, I don't know if you can still watch it free. Uh, I think you can still watch like the first hour of it free until I think it said June first. Um, so I mean, if nothing else, go check that out. Um, if, if you like the first hour, you know it's definitely worth it to to check it out. You know, um, buy the iPay per view. Um, again, if if nothing else, it's worth it for the main event, which was awesome. Um, but I'll definitely <clears throat> try to check out a lot uh, a lot more Wrestle Circus. Um, it definitely it seems like a really good show, um, good promotion. Um, I wish I had gone to the Midnight After Mania show, um, but I, I, I was just so busy WrestleMania weekend anyway that um, I, I just couldn't fit another thing in there. I was way too tired. But um, that was uh, my review. Uh, sort of review i kind of went through it as quickly as i could of lucha carn of wrestle circuses lucha carnival um as usual uh hit that subscribe button like the video share the video uh if you watch the show let me know what you thought of it um follow us on twitter at icw underscore podcast we will be back um i think we're doing something monday uh this is going up Sunday morning. Um, right now it's one thirty-one. Sunday morning. Um, I, I'm sure we'll do something Monday. I forgot what we were planning on doing. Um, but then <clears throat> Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we have um, obviously two hundred five live, NXT, and then TNA, and then Friday will be the Friday night fight app review. So uh, our 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 weeks are getting busy again. Um, I think we are we are still trying to get that uh six back in at some point so look out for that um and we will see you guys in the next episode see ya